I'm so excited to share some of what I've learned about my favorite procedure, which is ICL surgery. ICL surgery starts with a one millimeter paracentesis around 10.30 or 11, aiming in the nine o'clock direction. And as you see, we enlarge the internal portion of the paracentesis to make it easier to use the manipulator. Next, we use Epi Sugar Cane. This not only helps ensure adequate dilation through the case, but also is more comfortable as the ICL does touch the iris. The OVD, which we use OcuCoat, is very nuanced actually. So we're injecting until the noodles start to coalesce, but maybe don't form one solid glob as they would maybe in cataract surgery because we don't want to overpressurize the eye. We're also applying downward force on the paracentesis to help displace the aqueous out, which prevents all that OVD from just immediately burping out of the eye. Next, the main incision, we stabilize the eye with a Thornton ring has to be at least 2.75 millimeters. We use a three millimeter main incision. And notice there's a slight upward angle so we don't inadvertently touch the capsule. Now it's time to actually implant the ICL. And we're gonna do that with a very shallow insertion, not like an IOL, we're not aiming for the bag, we're aiming for the angle. But before that, we let a little bit of OVD out just so there's less behind the actual lens. Now we're watching those leading haptics and once they unfold in the right orientation, you know the insertion is gonna be fine, it's gonna open in the right orientation and we can just commit to it. Now we use a little more OcuCoat to create space between the endothelium and the lens to give us room to use the manipulator and tuck the foot plates into position. So now we use that manipulator and again, it's a good thing we enlarge that paracentesis so there's plenty of room to work. We really wanna grab the foot plates by the very edge or as close to the edge as we can. So see here, we're reaching right towards the edge, working our way out there if possible. If you're not near the edge, there's gonna be a lot more downward force. You might curl up the edge of the foot plate and that might not rest correctly in the sulcus space. So sometimes one haptic tucks itself, which is nice. And then now it's time for the longer part of the case, which is actually the OVD removal. We like to let a little bit out through the main first, just to get the process started. And a lot of the work really is through the main. So you can see here, the actual ICL insertion was a lot quicker than the OVD removal. So our technique is to use BSS to kind of clump the OVD together and applying intermittent downward pressure on the main incision to let it burp out. If you watch the iris throughout this part, I'm always very careful not to overpressurize the eye and then let all that pressure out through the main. So keep, keep the eye kind of soft through the whole OVD removal process. We also don't like to use the IA, which some places do, that may create a risk of hydrating the crystalline lens and we also just feel that it's wasteful. We very rarely have even post-up day zero IOP spikes using these methods, so certainly using just BSS and a cannula seems to be extremely effective. Other ways to ensure as much of the OVD is evacuated as possible, you can see this rocking motion of the lens. This is this just manual expression allows the OVD to come from around the back of the lens. Sometimes you can rotate the lens around, just create spaces and pressure gradients to allow the OVD to come around. You also notice a decent amount of OVD does come out through the central port. It's important though that we don't aim for those ports ever during hydration because we don't want to be pushing all that fluid under pressure right into the crystalline lens. So we're never aiming for those ports, but we do, you'll notice during the pressure gradients that OVD will come out through the ports. So here we are continuing and especially with cameras like the Ingenuity, it's very easy to see the remaining OVD, there seems to be a little bit near the endothelium and that bubble helps us to tell us that there's some trapped near the endothelium. So again, I'm very diligent about not having any pressure problems after surgery. So I might take more time than others just to really ensure that as much OVD is out as possible. After Going through the main a little bit, we can switch to the para just to get fresh angles, really allow those vortexes to swirl around the angles. Again, that helps clump the OVD and then gentle downward pulsing pressure on the main or the para allows the OVD to exit. So here's more rocking, gentle rocking back and forth, doing what we can. 
to get all the OVD out that we can. And again, it might not all come out. There might be still some behind the lens, but that's okay, it will dissolve over time. As long as we get most of it out, we can feel good that there won't be any pressure problems after surgery. Now we vent a little bit more of the BSS out through the para because we want to leave the eye very soft after surgery. And then that's it. We've treated 16 diopters in under six minutes.